Hello, I'm Becky Safe. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at drum and bass drum patterns. So if you're brand new to drum and bass, this is going to be really helpful for you. I'm going to walk you through the fundamental two-step rhythm, and then we're going to build on top of that using claps, ghost snares, and hi-hats. And then from there, I'm going to show you how you can do a cheat way or a workaround using drum and bass breaks and extracting the patterns from those breaks and making your own drum patterns around them. And that's actually the way that I like to make my drum patterns because then I can include the drum breaks in them and I know that I'm maintaining that groove. The timestamps to this video are below in the description as well as all of the other links that you might want to check out, including my free ebook, which is 10 Steps Music Producers Use to Make Music Faster. So make sure you grab your free copy and let's get into the project and I'll show you the fundamental two-step pattern first. Okay, so with drum and bass, you need to first First, start your project at the correct project tempo, and that is generally anywhere between 170 and 175, with the most common tempo being 174. So this project is at 172, and I have a drum rack loaded onto the first track, and this is how I'm going to show you how to do your drum patterns. Now you can use audio files directly in your arrangement window, or you can load a drum rack like how I've done here. So on the first pad, I have a kick, then a snare, hi-hat, clap, ghost snare, and an open hi-hat. Back into the MIDI clip, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to program our kick. So we will always have a kick on beat one of the bar, so that's the first kick. And then unlike with house music, where it would be four to the floor, and you would put your kick at 1.3, instead of doing that, you move your kick to 1.3 Point three. So that's halfway between beat three and beat four. So in the middle. And this is going to create our two step rhythm. Now, similarly with house music, you would put your snare on beat one, two and beat one, four. So this is one bar divided into quarters. So if you look at the kick, it's on beat one. And then the next kick is in between the quarter between beat three and four in this one bar. And then the snare is on two and the snare is on four. So let's play this. And you can hear there that we've got that shuffle two-step rhythm. Now we can add in our hi-hat. So we're gonna add the hi-hat on eighth notes. So remember, this is divided into quarters here. Now the eighths, so divide it again into eighths. And now we have a hi-hat on eighth notes. So this is a very standard drum and bass pattern. It's a two-step rhythm. And I would recommend that if you're gonna start writing drums for drum and bass, that you actually start with this pattern and then move from there. And you always know that you're going to have a solid foundation that you can build on top of. So the next instrument that we have here is a clap. And claps are really good because they accentuate the snare. They pull up those upper frequencies of the snare drum and just give you a lot more stereo width. So the clap, I would layer on top of the snare. So we can see the snare here on two and four. So let's add a clap and now let's play it. Let's just skip the ghost snare for a moment and we'll go up to the open hi-hat and you can see that there's actually space in between these hi-hats here on the track down below where we could actually add in an open hi-hat. Now just be careful if you're adding two sets of hi-hats, a closed one and an open one, to not layer them on top of each other like that because in the real world a drummer would never ever play an open hi-hat and a closed hi-hat at the same time. So bring your open hi-hat in between the closed hi-hats. And now we have the hi-hats on 16th. It sounds a bit messy, and the reason being with your drums in drum and bass, you wanna make them quite short. And I can hear that that length there, that's what's making it sound quite messy and not very tight. So go back into your drum rack, go on to the open hi-hat. And the great thing about this is you can shorten them. So shorten them and add a fade. And 
and then you might want to come back into the MIDI clip and actually shorten your notes. So let's go on to 132 and we can shorten the MIDI notes so that they're even shorter. Okay, so let's look at the ghost snare and ghost snare is not your main snare. It's just an additional snare that adds to the rhythm and groove of your track. So you can see we have our main snare here on two and on four and you want to put a ghost snare on the 16th notes. So these are the eighth notes here. 16th would be here. We could add one here. And we can also double up the kick drum. So let's put a double kick here. We could add another kick here. So we're looking for the eighth notes where we can add a kick. Now another thing to bear in mind is your velocities as velocities will add to groove, rhythm, feel and humanization. Really important, especially in electronic music because you don't want just static notes and everything playing at the same velocity. And you can see that at the bottom of the screen here, we have velocities that are all the same. So all of the drums are all playing at the same velocity, which is going to make it sound a bit computerized. So we can go into our ghost snare, for example, and we can bring the velocity of the ghost snares down. We could also bring the velocity of the hi-hat down. And we could bring the clap velocity down as well. So we've already started to humanize the sound of our instruments because now they're not all playing at the same velocity. And you can take these patterns even further. You don't have to have the snare on the two and the four. You could move the snare around, but just make sure that you're not gonna put it on top of a kick drum. So you could move the snare here and you can move the kick back here. So now you have a little bit of a different pattern that's going against the grain of the fundamental two-step rhythm, but you still have that two-step feel because you have instruments that are on the off beats. In between two and three, we have a snare, which is that off beat rhythm. And another thing you might want to do is if you duplicate this pattern, so now we have two MIDI clips with the same pattern running throughout. You might want to switch it up in the second half so that it makes it a little bit interesting as you're moving your drum track along in your project. So we can switch it up by moving the kick out here. Maybe we could get a snare roll, take the kick out here. And that's how a lot of people switch up their drum patterns over time is that they just add small variations so that it changes and it keeps it interesting for the listener even if they don't actually notice because they're passively listening they're going to remain interested in the track. And now I'm going to show you the way that I use most often which is reverse engineering from a drum break getting your drum pattern from that break and then using the break in your track as well because drum and bass is not just about the main drum hits with the hi-hats, the kicks, the snares and the claps. It is also about incorporating breaks into your tracks. So back into the project and here I have a drum break. We can actually visually see where our drum hits are. So I'm going to put a kick here. I'm going to put a snare here 
kick here. And I believe that this is actually another kick. Let's just listen. Yep. Snare. Kick. Snare. Kick and snare. And there I have my drum pattern. And then from there, I'm gonna use that drum break in my track as well, knowing that my main drum pattern is matching the pattern of the break. And then from there, I'm going to use that break in my track, knowing that the percussive parts of the break are going to match the groove or the rhythm of my main drum hits because I've programmed them identically to the drum break. But obviously we're going to have a little bit of clash there because our drum hits are on top of each other now. So all you need to do is get an EQ8 or an equalizer and high pass it so that you're removing the main drum hits from your break. Or you could even just chop them out like that and you could start to copy your percussive parts of your break so that it starts to just sit on top of your main drum hits. And that's how I would normally program my drums is by taking a break and extracting the pattern from the break and then using the break in my track as well. Maintaining the groove, getting an interesting pattern and being stylistically correct for drum and bass. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you got something out of it, please consider liking and dropping a comment below as it always helps to get this content out to the wider community. And I really appreciate it. And if you want to be notified of when I post more videos, hit the subscribe button. If you do like my teaching style, don't forget to check out my courses below, including a complete Ableton Live 11 course, a full breakdown of everything you need to know in order to make music in Ableton Live. And if you want to fast track your learning, I fully recommend doing courses. Instead of spending three years at university, learn from somebody that already knows everything that you need to know and fast track your way to releasing your own music. And that is it from me and I will see you for another video. Bye!